Robert Scaper here from Making Your Miles Count, doing a little bit of an addition to a Driver Inc. podcast that I produced, I guess it was last week or so. Uh, there's another article that just came out I wanted to uh, tag on a little bit more comment with regards to the entire controversy. Uh, and this article uh, came out in uh, trucknews.com. I'd like to say her last name, but it's from Christina. S-H-C-H. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> e D. R-I-N-A. The title of the article is Government Takes Driver Inc. Issue Super Seriously, uh, Minister Anand. I'm going to go with three paragraphs here. I think it all has to do with the, the topic. The Driver Inc. issue remains on the federal government's radar and is on the desks of the Minister of Transportation and Labor, said Anita Anand, President of the Treasury Board, speaking to Angela Splinter, CEO of Trucking HR Canada at the 10th Annual Women with Drive Leadership Summit. At this point, I can say I'll take that feedback to them, including people clapping when you raised the point with me. I'm certainly in close touch with the Labour Minister, uh, O'Regan. I know he's taking it super seriously. The next paragraph, Anand noted the Treasury Board needs to hear industries feedback on all processes and uh, procedures in place to create more fluid and resilient supply chains through programs like Let's Talk Federal Regulations. I I assumed this last paragraph um, still had to do with uh, the Driver Inc. As if you keep on going, it talks about uh, International Women's Day uh, and, and the like, diversity and inclusion and all the other. It's a very short article. Uh, I'm not sure what the last half had to do with uh, Driver Inc. But uh, anyway, when it comes to the Driver Inc. model and the Driver Inc. controversy, a lot of articles have been written on it. And they are, uh, number one, they're extremely confident that the entire model is illegal. That's a very strong word that they very much imply. And uh, they say, it's just a matter of time and the the hammer is coming down, the hammer is coming down. This is another example of uh, articles, media articles, uh, focusing on the Driver Inc. or Incorporated Driver uh, model and really not saying a whole lot other than saying uh, that it's on somebody's desk. First of all, from a Canada Revenue Agency perspective, um, if it was in completely uh, um, an absolute um, um, do not pass go, do not collect $200, there there is no debate about Driver Inc. at all, Uh, why is it even on the minister's desk? CRA would be um, after the individuals uh, immediately, but it's not. And that's what my prior podcast talked about. Uh, Just the fact that it's on somebody's desk and they're taking it very seriously uh, means that this is not in Canada Revenue Agencies. It's not on their radar to to enforce this. It's now political. And that's the reason why it's on somebody's desk. I still personally believe there's a 20 to 30 percent chance that the driver inc or incorporated driver uh, will be able to be allowed and well that still means that 70 to 80 percent uh uh um that it's going to be defeated and and shut down but it is not a slam dunk like they're talking about to some degree when they when they use words like uh, i'm certainly in close touch with a labor minister And here's another, at this point, I can say I'll take the feedback to them, including people clapping when you raise the point with me. Now, that means that this this is not an issue that the government themselves are actually saying, oh, we're going to handle this. This is top of priority. They're doing it based on the media, like in this case, this article, saying it's a big issue and we would do it and we'll take it to concern because everybody's clapping about it. Yay! But they're not bringing it up. The MTO is not bringing it up. The CRA is not bringing it up. Uh, this is probably the, the lobbying of the Canadian Trucking Alliance and other like groups. So it is not a slam dunk like they say. CRA has not made an absolute ruling on it. 
and as we found out last podcast uh, CRA doesn't always their rulings aren't even, don't even always make sense sometimes so they are leaving this in the hands of politicians and uh, whether that comes very quickly or or it doesn't come uh, very quickly depends entirely on uh, the next election it could be two years and the next election before anything ever comes off of that desk uh, so until then it keeps right on going now I want to emphasize one other thing this may not be very popular but case set up I was talking to a carrier uh, owner and also a, a VP a little while ago and one of the things that both of them actually stated was that the driver ink model gives a an advantage to a carrier that that utilizes them and that's why they're undercutting the the rates and that's how they are undercutting the rates and I ran through the numbers my last podcast and showing that it's only about 10 percent of the 35 percent that determines the and that's just CPP and EI so what they're doing is it's so minuscule it's not going to make a big difference so in other words if I snap my fingers or anybody snaps their fingers and suddenly okay driver ink is not the not the issue anymore I can almost guarantee you that the undercutting that they're all complaining driver ink is causing is not going to go away because their business model a lot of the Asians is business model is different than the traditional Canadian model uh, let me give you an example. Just think about this logically for a second. I've been to actually several uh, trucking companies that were Asian managed or Asian owned. Here's the situation. Their head offices look very, very differently than the head offices of the traditional Canadian or North American model. Some of these carriers that are complaining they're being undercut have 10, 20, 30 million dollar head offices, glass, brass, unbelievable millions of dollars put into these beautiful buildings. That costs money. That is cl classified as overhead, administrative overhead. And do you know what I don't find very often in the Asian carriers? <laughs> administrative overhead they very much appear humble in their means just the fact of the administrative uh, overhead itself can create a competitive advantage over the, the traditional great big giant carriers who are complaining about driver ink I think that is a great big issue compared to driver ink it's immaterial realistically the driver ink in my opinion is immaterial to a competitive advantage but maybe some of the North American carriers can sell some of their 30 40 million dollar office buildings and be a little bit more humble so that they they can compete with people who are not as concerned with the luxury of head office that's just my thoughts but realistically I see right uh, I see owner operators and very very small carriers with virtually no administration at all it's run out of the basement of their house with four five ten trucks and their you know their wife is doing the receivables and their administration is next to nothing I think when it comes to a really really tight year like 2023 and 24 it was and is uh, administration costs is way bigger burden on a trucking company than is pretty much anything else realistically right down the R street from where my office is is a 40 million dollar building that was just built for a company that does uh, hog processing and they were halfway through building this 40 million dollar beautiful building by the way and their parent company went bankrupt and then a whole bunch of their subsidiaries went bankrupt so here they got a 40 million dollar investment and what do they do they try and rent out little offices sometimes when whether it's trucking companies or whether it's any kind of business the owners like to stroke their egos a little bit too much and they say man we want nicer carpet we want brass and glass and whatever and realistically they can't afford it and they take it from the the little guy sometimes 
or they complain when they're undercut because other people don't make that choice and decision. Sometimes they make really good decisions. Like I was just talking to a guy who says, during the, the incredible prices of highway tractors in 2022 and 2023, 2022, I guess, guys were selling them for two, three times what they were worth. Um, guys who really knew what they were doing, they didn't buy with excessive prices like that. So they were smart in that regard. But are they smart when they, when they build these $30 million office buildings? I don't know. It really, I, maybe I, I don't want to know. I kind of think, you know what, when it really comes down to it, uh, some of the brick and mortar choices and decisions that, that carriers have, they are less practical and they're more ego based. But that's just my thoughts. If you want to hear more comments like this, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we got a vast array of different topics that we talk about. And probably our key area is uh, income tax for independent operators. And uh, if you're not using non-taxable benefits, you're not saving $12 plus $1,000 per year. Subscribe. Find out what exactly we do differently than anyone else. Have a good trip.